so I'm going to be mixing up a lot of grays that are um, lighter in value than what I have here. Not highly saturated like what is um, what was the original layer. Right now I've got kind of a mid-tone. Make it lighter. I'm not going to try and hit the highest value yet. I still want to play around. Um, here's what I've got on my palette. If you can see that, um, it's kind of a very pale green, gray green. I mentioned I want to introduce some geometric lines into this, so I'm using this paint, Painter's Edge tool um, to start to do that. And it's not perfect, but that's okay at this stage. It's not, you know, the, the paint still can seep underneath it. But right now I'm just trying to um, introduce some very large shapes. So. I'm still not going to worry about what I'm covering up too much, but I do want some of these more geometric hard edges in here, so I'm just going to, uh, these painter's edges come in, in differing lengths. Here's a really long one, I was using the shorter one before, and I'm going to walk up close to the surface and try and capture some of the nuances that are in these new positive shapes that are very opaque as I mentioned you really can't see through them and that's the definition of opacity. I tried to go for um, you know when I introduced a new uh, gray these are all grays by the way these new shapes which just means that they're not so highly saturated like the colors that are underneath them 
So instead of a really bright red or bright yellow, bright purple, I've taken those colors and really dulled them down with a, a gray. And um, notice the subtle shifts in color as well as value. I uh, wanted to definitely uh, introduce, say, these subtle shifts in, in um, color, but then I didn't want them to be isolated. So you can see like here, I've got this pretty light value. It looks, I know to you, very white, but it's kind of a cool white. Well, if I'm gonna do that, then I'm gonna go over and kind of like what I like to say is cross pollinate. Maybe I'll add a little bit of that white here and I'm gonna spread it around. I've got a wet brush, I can move it around. Um, I might add up some of that nice lighter value to the upper left hand corner so that even though I'm working kind of, um, in this case, it's a large, a large work. And even though it's kind of working from left to right, I'm not really just working from left to right. I'm trying to be aware that I'm working on the whole painting at a time, at one time. Um, I want to see the painting as a whole. So in order to get a feel for these shapes that I added, I needed to step back um, that probably wasn't always evident in the video that you see, but what am I going for? I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I love shape and I'm trying to vary um, the size, the length, the width, the type of edge, whether it's rectilinear or curvilinear. And, you know, again, this is just a layer. It's not meant to be anything final. So there is no pressure and I love that. That's why it's so much fun in this stage to just play. I definitely consider this to be a stage of play. You can see I did, you know, purposefully leave some of that background crazy color. Uh, at this point, I will say that, you know, there's more of that crazy color than I'll need in the end. Uh, but again, there is a reason for starting that way. Even if I don't, even if a lot of that color is gone by the end, what remains just couldn't be there in the final painting if I didn't start that way. And you know, you as the artist can choose how much of that you want to keep. But if you don't start that way, if you don't start bold and you know, with all these crazy, crazy colors, then you're not gonna have an awful lot to work with later on. And the way I put them on, you know, they are pretty dark in relationship to what I just did. So they do create kind of a pop in value, obviously, but right now there's just way too much going on. This is not an easy painting to look at in a way any more than it was before. Um, well, okay, maybe there's a little bit, a little bit easier um, on the eye to look at it, but still what's happened now is I've got a very opaque layer and I've got it, um, the colors are all related to the colors underneath. So that's one thing I've got going for me. But now I'm going to be sanding, gouging, scraping, um, probably doing a more, more drawing. And I'm going to continue to play and just add to the surface quality, the surface history as I build this painting. In order to sand the surface of this painting, um, as you can imagine, there's gonna be a lot of particles flying around. And so just a little note about safety. Um, I have a pair of goggles that I would definitely want to protect my eyes. Um, I, I have sensitive eyes and over time, all that dust that's flying around, you know, it's, it's just something that I, I think my eyes are less irritated by the end of the day if I know I'm gonna be sanding a lot. So I would definitely wear these. And then I've got a full blown respirator with these 3M, as you can see the, the 3M logo on here. Um, and and this, this grade of filter is actually for very fine particles like solvents. And I, I'm not worried about solvents right now, but I am, I'm still concerned about inhaling particles. I could probably wear a smaller mask, but you know, um, just so that you're kind of aware that you might want to protect your lungs from all these little particles. That's a good thing. And then as far as like, what am I going to scrape with? Of course I have this all, I have a couple different, um, 
points that work. And this is a orbital sander. What I like about this one, it's a Makita. And it has this little bag on it that collects dust. But as a, just a word of caution, um, you, can, you can definitely empty this and, you know, that, that works. But you'll notice that even when it's collecting this dust, these paint particles, um, there's still a lot of dust that isn't caught by this little bag. So you can't just completely say, well, yeah, I'm okay um, because I have this little bag here. No, you kind of still have to protect yourself. So just wanted to let you know that uh, it's, it's so much fun to paint. It's, it's great. Um, but your, your uh, materials, especially things like titanium, white, and all the cadmiums, um, which are heavy metals, uh, it just even though they're in the dry form, if they get into your system, um, that's not good. So protect your health. So here in this container, just a plastic container, I still am working in acrylic. I've mixed up a glaze made of colors that are already in the painting. And I've um, added a little bit of that airbrush uh, liquid to it. Um, it's called this golden airbrush medium. It's, you shouldn't be adding water to thin out your acrylics, by the way because um, it has to do with the molecules not being able to, to bond to each other. So anyways, when you use the acrylic, uh, sorry, the airbrush medium, um, that's, a good, that's a good thing, it's a good bond. So um, I'm just gonna uh, spread this around the entire painting. It's gonna look pretty bad, it's gonna be drippy. But then I'm gonna take a lot of it off and the whole purpose of this is to go into all those little crevices that I just gouged into the surface, um, making them more pronounced but then I take most of it off and then I'm going to let that dry. Um, then I'll put that clear uh, Liquitex gesso over the top. Now we'll take a closer look after the uh, warm glaze has been put on, scrubbed on really, and then scrubbed off with steel wool, dipped in clean water, and then dried off the surface. Um, just want to show you up close how it's gone into these crevices, into the gouges, both the thin gouges and the thicker gouges, and you know, that was kind of a part of the point. The other point was to harmonize the surface because at the beginning of today, those opaque shapes felt very foreign to the rest of the painting. And by glazing now, they feel more unified. And it's kind of a step in the right direction no matter what stage you're at. For those of you who love layering and paintings, this is um, kind of my way of uh, being able to get layers in there is just kind of superimposing one idea over another and another and another and then glazing and distressing the surface and mark making um, kind of on every level kind of treating each layer in, a, in the same way because um, in the end it 
you know, if every square inch of this painting has experienced the same life and history, then um, in the end, I hope that those activities, the touch of my, uh, my hand um, lends itself to the overall aesthetic of this painting. So that's where it is now. And I think I'm going to now coat it with the clear gesso made by Liquitex. That's kind of my favorite brand. I'm not sure if other companies make it, but for now, that's what I use. This is a good time to um, show you how I would now start working on this painting with uh, cold wax and oil. So why would I do that again? Um, the surface quality of an acrylic painting is, um, given that it is a sort of a plastic kind of paint, um, it has its attributes, it has its pros and cons, um, and there are a lot of good things about it. And certainly I've done a lot of paintings that were completely ac acrylic, and I enjoy that. But I also enjoy the, um, some of the wonderful attributes of the cold wax and oil, especially over an acrylic underpainting like this. So I've been able to make a lot of progress. In other words, I started out with completely white gesso panels, and now I've got something on the board that dried fast, it's acrylic, I've uh, got some layering going on, some push and pull, I've got a value pattern sort of established or at least begun to be established with shapes that I like. If I had done this all with cold wax and oil, yes, I could have done that as well, but this gave me a little bit of a jump start. And because you can uh, work with both mediums as long as you let this acrylic dry and then do the next stage, which I'm going to demonstrate, then um, why not do it? And it's just, uh, it's really fun. Um, some of the advantages of the cold wax and oil now is that um, I've got that wonderful cold wax, which is, um, it's a little bit transparent. Um, you put it on very thinly and you can get some wonderful glazes. You have more time to work with it. You have more time to manipulate things. It's not, now it's not drawing as fast as the acrylic and maybe that's a good thing. So. Um, you can build, continue to build your layers of depth and um, through a masking process, which I do a lot with newsprint, um, I can still get some nice uh, well-defined shapes and it's just, it's just an extension. Um, I look at it kind of as the very same process, but I'm using a different medium now. So um, the product that I'm going to use is Liquitex Clear Gesso over this entire panel, which has just been sanded. Here is the product that I'm going to use. It's Liquitex Clear Gesso. And like it says, it, it's going to dry clear. Um, this particular product just says that it, it's uh, more fluid than thick. It's more transparent than opaque. It's more matte than gloss. And um, it's used more as a preparation application rather than a finish. So you wouldn't want to use this as a finishing coat. It's meant to be, again, that um, membrane between your acrylic and your oil painting, your cold wax and oil painting. So my idea is to treat the painting with this now, let it dry, and then it'll be a good surface for me to continue on with the oil and cold wax. I've mixed it up in this container. I've just put it in here and I'm going to use the sponge tool to apply it in a smooth and even way. Expect it to be drippy. Start at the top and see how it goes on. I'll be able to tell that this is on there too, that I've had full coverage when it's dry because it feels gritty. And if I were to run my hand over the surface and find an area that didn't feel gritty, I would then add more of this clear gesso because the idea is to cover the entire surface, not just part of it. I want to treat the whole thing. It'll look a little milky at first, like any acrylic medium but then it'll dry clear and of course it doesn't take long for it to dry so today I'll be able to start working on it in cold wax and oil. I'm trying to work in a systematic way from left to right so I don't miss anything. I'm taking advantage of this whiteness so that I can see where I've been 
It's also a little bit glossy when you first put it on. That's going to disappear. It will be a matte surface. I like the sponge brush because it doesn't leave a lot of, um, you know, brush marks. Not that that would be a bad thing necessarily. Texture's fine, but it also just applies it really fast and not too neatly. I'm dripping everywhere. 